Today I have three fall decor DIYs that are rustic and cottage core. Keep watching! Here are the collab rules. You must watch each video and comment on each one to qualify to win one of the $50 cards. The links will be in the description box. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Welcome! So for project number one, I'm using paint stirs, nine of them. My challenge was to use paint stirs by the Crafting Cousins. Now what I'm doing is making a fence or I'm making a gate, like a garden gate. So I'm using these paint stirs and I am marking those down to give it the look of a gate or a fence panel. Just using my pencil and marking those on there and then you can use whatever cutting device you want to use. My wood does split a little bit cutting it this way but it goes right back together and you can't even tell that it has any damage. So I'm going to clean up my edges as much as possible and then I'm going to use my sanding block to just smooth out any of the little splintered ends. You're just going to rub it back and forth and just kind of rock it side to side to round the corners just a little bit. Perfect. I'm going to do the same thing with this one because these are our supports. One is going to go on the top to cover up the little grooves and then one of course on the bottom. Just like you would see if you were walking down the road in the country and you see a little picket fence beside you. So I'm just going to use my little sanding block here to clean that up. This is a sanding block that I've had for quite some time that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's a very affordable tool for you to use to add to your crafting toolkit. Today I am very happy to be joining the Fab Five Friend Collab and this is hosted by the Crafting Cousins Trish and Kay and they have invited five friends to come and challenge each other with items to make crafts with. So as I said before I was challenged by the Crafting Cousins and then you will look in the box below and you'll see the one that I challenged. So be sure you watch everybody's videos and comment. All right, I'm going to take some wipes now and some of my antiquing wax, and I'm going to stain each one of these. You can leave it bare if you like that color, but I wanted to make mine look a little bit darker. You could even paint these white if you like farmhouse or if you want a white picket fence. This is real easy to do. You don't have to use a paintbrush. You just go around your planks. I'm going to do all the sides and the ends as well. And then so we got our support pieces done now we're going to do each one of our little pickets going to keep turning that cloth and then add some more if you need to add some more just like i'm doing rub it in really good so you don't have um, a chunk of paint in one spot you want to have even distribution of your color so that's what i'm doing I'm just initially laying it on each one of these you can see it really brings out the texture in that wood so I like that. I like a rustic look and to see that in that wood just really brings my heart a little bit of joy. It's the simple things, right? It is the simple things. Okay, once they are dry, this is how they look. They will lighten up just a little bit. And we're going to reassemble our fence or our gate to look like so. Simple. I'm going to use a little bit of wood glue and just a little stick that I have over here. This is just a little crafting um, little piece of wood. And I'm going to decide exactly where I want to put it and then how I'm going to put it down. So I'm going to flip it over and we're going to start off by using some popsicle sticks to secure the back down. So here we go, tongue depressors, popsicle sticks. You can use whatever size that you have. As long as they don't extend the sides and show. You don't want them to show. I'm going to use a little hot glue here and cover these up. Now it doesn't go all the way down to the last plank but that won't matter because we're going to overlap it. Again this is the back nobody's going to see it. It's going to be ideally against a wall but if it's something that you wanted to hang maybe on a glass door or something like that you might consider covering this with some craft paper so you don't see all of the hardware that we're putting on the back to hold it together. 
And this works really well, I have found. Um, this is not something that I would put outside by any means, so you don't have to worry about the humidity maybe making your glue break away and your project fall apart. This works for me. Okay, so now it is together very nicely, very securely. We've got it flipped over, and now is when we're gonna use our wood glue. We're gonna use a little wood glue for a long, sturdy fix, and we're gonna use a little bit of hot glue on there also to make it work quickly. You can certainly just use the hot glue if you don't want to use, you know, if you don't want to, to fool with this, or you could just use the wood glue and clamp it down and let it dry. I just have fun alternating. So little here, little here. Put the hot glue down last because it dries fastest. There we go. That can be clamped in place, especially if you have one of those planks that wants to kind of bow out. Um, I ordered mine, my paint stirs from Amazon and a large pack. I'll put that link below for you so you can find some very affordable and I still have lots and lots and lots of sticks for more projects. Okay, just a little bit here and there. You can see now I've made a mess down there. There's a piece of hair or some fibers or something stuck in there. Not a worry, you're not gonna see it. We're not gonna sweat the small stuff. There you go, bam, covered up. And a little clamp here and a little clamp there. Those clamps came from Dollar Tree as well. Just wanna make sure that nothing is bowing out in a way. Look at these cool things. These are really good weights to hold things um, flat and I love to use them in my projects. Plus they're pretty to look at. I think they're electricity insulators. Tell me what you think they are. I think that's what they are. Okay, now we're gonna pretty it up. Look at these gorgeous gold pieces of greenery. Or would we call those goldery? They're gonna go up top. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to it because I love orange and rust colors in the fall. A little thrifted pumpkin and this thrifted sign. The sign probably came from Hobby Lobby, something like that maybe. And I'm just trying to decide what I want to go on the top, which pumpkins I want to use. You do the same thing and choose whatever you like. I'm going to use a piece of this garland from Dollar Tree and just pick off the ones that match. You can see here that I'm looking to see what colors I want to use. I'm going to take the hardware off the back of this little box sign because if you leave it on there, it won't lay flush against your little gate or fence. And we want to be sure that that glue has nice flat surfaces to adhere to so they don't come apart. I'm going to go around the edge of this black to just make it, give it a little worn look here. Again, I like rustic. If you don't like to do that, you certainly don't have to. You can skip that step. I'm going to add some hot glue on the borders here on the back. Dollar Tree has beautiful little box signs like this that you could certainly use. Something You could use something thrifted or maybe something you used last year. You can repurpose it. Okay, so these greenery pieces, or goldery pieces, they are on wire and they're easily flexed into the position that we like. You do not have to leave your, your picks in the way that they came from the store. You can bend them. Bend them and flex them to your desired result. So this is so simple. I'm gonna put one gold on one side, one on the other, other, one orange on one side, one on the other. And then I'm just gonna use a little tie here to tie it off. You can use a pipe cleaner, you can use wire, you can use whatever you like to go in the center of yours. Clip off your excess. And there's the start of your swag for the top of this little garden gate or fence piece. Here I am cutting off, and really honestly, this is so thin, the plastic that holds it on, you could probably just pull these off. But I cut them off, and I'm gonna be using these to layer underneath and around it. You can put a couple of pieces together here and there. I do this a lot on my projects, kind of layering the greenery. That's easy. So we're going to start by going to the top and we're going to glue that down. 
A clamp is going to be your best friend in the circumstance because your wires will try to flex away from your surface and you want that glue to have a chance to harden before you move away from that part. Now there's some glue under there so I'm just going to add a little bit more and don't glue your clamp down. I'm going to add my greenery over there. Same thing, it's mirrored. What you do on one side, you do on the other. This is like the simplest swag ever. And I'm gonna take this cute little pumpkin and my craft knife, and I'm going to shave about mm, a third of it off so that it will lay flat against my project. Very easy. I just kept cutting away on this thing. Okay, then you're gonna add some glue. and press this down on there. I'm gonna press it into my leaves and in the little space that is between the leaves on the board so that nothing is loose and flying away. For these little white pumpkins, I didn't have any picks and I'm going to make some out of some leftover greenery stems that I had. They were brown, so I thought they would work. That's all there is to it. Now our pumpkins have little stems. I have some extra little bits of this. Um, I don't know if you would call this like seeded grass maybe. I'm just gonna add those pieces in there, here and there. Once is never enough for me. If you've watched my videos, you know I'm constantly going back and adding things here and there. I like to do what feels right, so I just keep kind of fooling with it. I kind of go off into my own little zone and keep working until something just feels right. And then I'll know it's complete. I found some acorns in my stash, so I'm going to add those. I think this is going to fit nicely into a rustic home. Maybe a little bit cottagey, maybe a little bit farmhousey. And I would almost say with the gold on there, maybe a little bit rustic glam. What do you think? Could this pass as rustic glam? It might. Okay, so I've just added that other little pumpkin. And because now there's a space, I'm going to add one more leaf just to fill it in. I don't want to cover up my words because the sign is really pretty. It's got gold accents and gold writing. It's really pretty. Okay, so, so far the swag is looking good. Now I want to add one more thing. Look what I found at the thrift store. It's a tiny spindle. I don't know what it came from, but it was all by itself. And then I thought, hey, I bet some of these wood beads I have will fit. And look there, they fit perfectly. And they hold that up away from the little piece of wood or tongue depressor or a paint stir underneath there. So there's a little gap. You can make a ribbon bow. You could put a little tea towel. You could put anything right there. What do you think about this project? Oh my gosh, I'm so tickled with this. You're gonna wanna flip it over and put any type of hanger of your choice on the back. Project number two. Gonna use this scrap piece of wood I have here. This is like a, looks like a piece of spindle. Maybe somebody was working with and didn't finish using it doesn't have any hardware attached to it. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here. I might have had a little too much fun playing with the glue. Do y'all remember school paste? It came in the little jar and it had the, the brush on it. Yeah, I liked playing with glue. Okay, so look at that beautiful design. Okay, so I'm gonna use this Christmas tree ornament and it's going to go right on top. I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue quickly in between all that wood glue. And I'm going to flip it over and glue it down so that it is relatively in the center of that little ornament. It's a wood slice. This is gonna be a cute little rustic piece. And here I have a little piece of thin wood disc. It's just a circle like a cutout. And I have some floral foam scraps. A candle. I do not suggest you using a wax candle like I have. I'm not going to use it for this project. I'm going to remove it, but 
for the time being, it's going to hold a place so that you know, you get an idea of what we're doing. But please, please, please do not use a candle that you light. Use a flameless candle here. Okay, I'm going to cut off little pieces of this floral foam and hot glue them down in a circle around this candle. Easy, easy. I don't recommend this particular type of floral foam because it is very messy. You can always use some other type of foam and just cut it into pieces so that you get uh, some type of a foam surrounding that you can add your greenery to. I have some thrifted greenery here, all kinds of eucalyptus, and so I have this bluish green in the eucalyptus. I have some orange and yellow leaves, and then I have some eucalyptus that I got from Dollar Tree, which I love, and I did buy some more of that. And it's that greenish, rusty color. And then I think I have some little floral picks from Dollar Tree as well. So I'm gonna start by laying out my base. This is going to be pretty much level with the tabletop. You wanna go to the bottom, right, right where the disc is, and start putting a circular pattern around the bottom. I like to work from the bottom upward. So that's what I'm doing here. You see what I mean? It's so flaky. The foam is so flaky that it kind of comes off, but you know, you can always glue it back down. No problem. Now, I'm gonna keep working in a circular pattern with my greenery. There is something about that green with that orange and gold that just, it does it for me. It's screaming fall for me this year. Really, really, really like that. Trim your branches down if you need to. Make them the right length. This is going to be kind of short and stout. This little candelabra, I guess you could call it. Or a candle stand. Whatever you want to call this. Then I'm just going to start adding in the eucalyptus. Working in fours so far is all I'm doing here. And then I'm going to go in the spaces on the bottom and work in fours also. Adding in whatever I have. I'm cutting down my floral picks and adding those in in the spaces. So you can see there's four there too. Just a pattern of four so far. Trim down what you need to trim and then start adding in whatever you want to add. Whatever type of greenery you have and you like, just start putting that in there. Now I'm just adding in here and there whatever I think looks good because I don't have any more of those pretty gold and orange greenery pieces. So I'm just going to add around. I'm just going to fluff them out. And this is what we have. And I'm happy with that. Now, it's going to sit on top of this little candle stand. But how are we going to make this stick if we don't glue it down? Well, I've got an idea for that. And I think you're going to like it. We're going to use little velcro dots. I'm going to take three of those and put them around in a triangular pattern, I guess you could say. So I've got the bottoms on, I'm going to push those down, and then I'm going to add the tops on top. I'm adding those on top of them so that when we push the, the other layer on it and squish it down really hard, those dots line up exactly where we want them to be. If you would have put the other part of the dots on the bottom of the candle, you never would have matched them up. So there you go. What do you think about that? Okay, for my third and final project, I have a ladder project. Okay, this is going to be like a little, a pumpkin garden ladder. Let's call it that. Right now, you can see me trying to get my placement. And then here, I'm doing the same cutting method as I used before. I'm going to take my sandpaper. I've just overlaid a rougher grit and I'm gonna just rock that back and forth and then move it side to side until I get that nice and smooth. See there? I'm gonna do that until it is perfectly smooth. I don't want any cut fingers or splinters anywhere. And I want it to look like it was intended to be this way, not like it was a paint stirrer in a previous life. This time we won't be staining or painting it. I'm going to leave it the exact same color that it is. Okay, so we're going to start figuring out where we want the rungs on our ladder. 
and I'm going to start putting down some glue. A stripe of wood glue, a stripe of hot glue. One for strong hold and one for permanent, well, one for a quick hold, let's put it that way. Okay, same here. And we're gonna do this down on the bottom too. I'm out of the camera, so you can't really see what I'm doing on the bottom, but I promise you, I'm going to do that. Clean up if you get any excess glue, like I do all the time. Just get you a little pick or something and just wipe that right off. If you do it while it's still wet, it'll come off and you'll barely notice. Now I'm using these little weights again to hold those down until they get a good grip on each other. So here's our ladder, cute. Cute little ladder. And I'm gonna use this. This came out of a book that came from Dollar General. Whimsical lettering. Here is the code. And I'm just gonna use, I like the happy place sign. So I'm gonna make a little sign for this project with this. This is an option if you don't have a Cricut, if you don't want a freehand lettering, and you don't have a printer. Get one of these cute books. I'm gonna put this little chalkboard looking sign on this scrap of wood that I already had. Came off another project, probably something from Dollar Tree. And it needs to be cleaned up just a bit. So I'm gonna just knock the splinters off the edges here and clean that up. Simple, simple. And then I'm gonna decide how I want this. Once I lay it down, I'm just gonna bend it so that I know where my borders are gonna be. And I know exactly how I wanna place it on that piece of wood. Just running a crease down there. Okay. Now you can just take a glue stick, which is what I'm using there on the bottom. There we go. And just covering it side to side and be sure that you get the corners and all the edges really well. place that down and now you can trim off what you don't want on there or you can use a sanding block and get it off. I'm using my little wallpaper tool to press it down and then you can see how easily it comes off with the sandpaper. You get a nice crisp edge that looks like it was supposed to be there all along. Plus it's going to match up with my other piece that um, the black sign that I did, the garden gate. It's gonna have that same little white edge as the black sign that we did. Okay, so there we go. Now we're gonna start making this ladder look like it has been leaned up against the side of a barn and we have some beautiful fall weeds growing up through it. So I'm just gonna wrap this around the back of my ladder. I'm gonna glue it down I'm going to take some more pieces of scrap greenery that I have. Here's some more, some little flowers, and then this beautiful pumpkin. Pull him off the pick, and I'm going to start gluing down. Put a little glue across that stem. A little bit of paper will help hold that in place back there, make it look nice and neat. And then, because these are on wires, I'm gonna twist these around just like a pumpkin vine grows and clings as it stretches out. That's what I'm gonna do with this weed. It's like it's been, the ladder's been there for, since the 40s. And we've got some beautiful greenery growing up through it. You can just twist those around, give them a little hot glue support where it's needed. I'm making a mess. and you just want to uh, press that down so that the wire doesn't pull away. And then once it's set up a little bit, then you can move on and twist it another way. And that's what you see me doing here. Just making it look wild and making it look like it would if it was all on its lawn, lonesome for years. What do you think? Isn't that cute? I love this. It's very cottagey looking as well, I think, this particular project. Okay. 
I am so happy to be working with Trish and Kay again. I have worked with them before and they are wonderful, genuine ladies. I appreciate them so much and you are going to love all the videos from all the other creators in the Fab Five videos. Plus you have a chance to win one of two cards. Who doesn't need a gift card, right? You could use a gift card, an Amazon gift card to start your Christmas shopping. You could use it to buy craft supplies. You could do anything you want because it will be yours, but you have to follow those rules. So be sure that you refer back to the rules at the beginning of the video. All right, so I wanna put my happy place sign right on the top. Just gonna clamp it down while I continue to work with the rest of it so nothing comes loose. Now I know that I want to use this pumpkin here and I think I can use this pumpkin as a stand to hold the ladder up so that it will be freestanding on its own. So you're just going to see me using my craft knife again or my utility knife. These come in a three pack. You can get them at Dollar Tree. I recommend them, highly recommend them. They slice through just like butter. Foam, foam board, whatever it is you're cutting. Okay, so I've cut out enough room, as you can see there, where the leg of the ladder will fit right through it. And look, it stands on its own. Y'all, Walmart has some really nice pumpkins and gourds out right now too, so if you're not finding what you like at Dollar Tree, Walmart's prices are comparable and the quality is fantastic. Mine, of course, was thrifted. But I've been watching, I've been keeping an eye out for y'all. We want to do affordable, yet high-end looking crafts for our home. I'm going to add some of these little weedy flowers here and there, adding my greenery here and there. I like to use a variety of greenery so that it does look like it's growing in the wild. I think that's part of the cottage aesthetic to make it look like, you know, you're walking out in a garden, you're walking out on a country road and you're seeing all the beauty. And we don't want things just growing straight up. Let's do some to the side. Let's layer it. You know, do it like God did it. Do it like you see out in the wild. And I'm still adding here and there until I get it exactly where I look at it and say, yeah, okay, this is good. I want to add one more little thing and I'm adding just a scrap piece of string that I have tied into a bow, just a simple bow, and I'm adding it right on the edge of the sign on the top. And I think because it looks like rope, more like rope than my other jute and, and other cording, so I think that this looks really nice. I think it fits well with the project. And this is how it turned out. This just might be my favorite one, guys. Which one is your favorite? The first, second, or third? It's really hard for me to decide. And I've displayed it here for you so you can see what it looks like with some more cottage and rustic type items. These are my three projects. And I think that they go quite well together and I think that they are the perfect rustic, rustic cottage look. Do you agree? Be sure that you check out the description box so that you can find the links to the next video and the video previous. Be sure that you find the links to the hostess uh, channel and that you go and check them out. Give them some love because they are showering lots of love in our community. Look at that. Look at those colors. If you are not already part of my YouTube family, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. And I want you to follow me on all my social media accounts, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. I love to, to talk to you and chat with you over there. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for stopping by, and I will see you again real soon. Bye.